An important part of American history is the history of immigration in this country. And a key part of the immigration history of this country are two places that are quite storied in the history books. One of them is Ellis Island in New York Harbor, and the other, less well known, is Angel Island in San Francisco Bay. And they tell uh, a lot about the history of immigration in this country, and I think it's worth spending a minute to try to figure out how they were similar and how they were different. Ellis Island opened in 1892, and it operated until 1940. And it was the place through which many, in fact, most European immigrants came during the early part of the century. It's estimated that some 12 million immigrants came through Ellis Island from Europe. At that time, uh, Ellis Island was the place where immigrants were screened into or kept out of the United States. And at that time, and I'm thinking of the period until 19, the 1920s, there were no numerical limits on immigrants to the United States. Immigrants from Europe were allowed in as long as they didn't fit into certain categories of people who would be barred from this country. That would be people with criminal records, um, anarchists and subversives, later communists, um, people uh, with uh, diseases. And the function of Ellis Island was to see if the people who were landing from Europe would fit into those barred groups of people. So 12 million people came through, they disembarked, they went up to something called the Great Hall, which you can visit today, and they were met by inspectors. The inspectors um, performed medical examinations, but they were largely uh, cursory, unless someone had an obvious uh, illness of some kind. And it's estimated that 99% uh, of people in Ellis Island who arrived in Ellis Island were allowed to disembark not only on Ellis Island, but then proceed on to New York City and to make new lives. The stories of the 1% that were kept out, those are heartbreaking stories, but they were the exception and not the rule. So Ellis Island screened out people, but it was largely, as the uh, legend is, um, uh, the gateway to new lives for, for millions of Europeans. The story of Angel Island is similar and it's different. Um, Angel Island was the gateway, somewhat similar superficially, for immigrants coming from from Asia. At Ellis Island, uh, you had only a small, only small groups of disabled people who were kept out. But the laws that were enforced at Angel Island were much more restrictive and they were much more, frankly, discriminatory. Chinese were excluded by various laws starting in 1875, then the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, um, and other acts, uh, federal statutes that kept out immigrants from Asia. For example, uh, laborers from China, those who were not students or merchants, were kept out until the 1940s. They were given the chance to prove that they were not Chinese laborers and that they should, by way of exception, be allowed in. Or they were allowed to show that they were U.S. citizens, born on U.S. soil, they had gone back to China and then come back to the United States and tried to get in. But it was really a place of severe interrogation. Uh, it was a place of detention. Most of the um, immigrants that came through Ellis Island never had to spend the night there. But Angel Island was a place where not only were there harsh interrogations and probing medical examinations, but, but detention while people's stories were being checked. And so it really became a place of um, exclusion and a place where the discriminatory laws that were in place from the 1870s really on up well into the mid 20th century were enforced. So in some ways, Ellis Island and Angel Island are similar. They're both gateways to this country. But in many ways, they're very different. And the difference reflects the different attitudes that were displayed in American law and American policy toward European immigrants who are largely welcomed and Asian immigrants who are largely excluded for a big chunk of American history from the last quarter of the 19th century well into mid-20th century.